At time of recording, I just posted a video involving something called the super golden ratio, which is related a little bit to the golden ratio. And so after that video, it was suggested to me that I complete the following integral, which is like motivated by both the golden ratio and the super golden ratio. And in particular, we'll calculate the integral from zero to one of the following rational function. We have x cubed minus x squared minus one over x squared minus x minus one. So how is this related to the golden and super golden ratio? Well, the positive root of this denominator is phi, that's the golden ratio, so that's well known. And then the unique real root of this polynomial in the numerator is psi, the super golden ratio. So that's how these are related to those two ratios. Okay, so let's get into it. So our first step here, since we have a rational function where the degree of the numerator is larger than the degree of the denominator, will be to do polynomial long division, giving us a quotient and remainder. And so that'll allow us to rewrite this as the integral from zero to one of x, and then plus x minus one over x squared minus x minus one dx. And so again, that's the quotient is x, and then the remainder is x minus one over the divisor, just based off the fact that we did that polynomial long division. And now we can split this into two integrals. So this will be the integral from zero to one of x dx, plus the integral from zero to one of x minus one over x squared minus x minus one dx. Now, of course, finding this first integral is quite easy using the fundamental theorem of calculus, but it's also kind of nice to think about this geometrically. So this represents the area of a right triangle with a 45 degree angle, just based off the fact that this is the curve y equals x. And so the base is one, the height is one, we can easily calculate that to be one half. So that gives us one half plus this other integral right here, which is zero to one of x minus one over. Now I'll do a little bit of simplification here, or maybe rewriting of the denominator, and that will be to complete the square. And we can do that and we'll get x minus half squared and then minus five over four dx. So again, like I said, that's just rewriting that denominator by completing the square. Now that motivates a certain change of variables. And that change of variables will, to, will be to set u equal to x minus half. That means that du is just dx. Now next up, let's notice when x is equal to zero, u is equal to minus half. And when x is equal to one, that means u is equal to a half. So that gives us all of the parts necessary to totally change this integral from a x integral to a u integral. So in fact, what we'll have is one half and then plus the integral from minus half to half of, well, x minus one, but if u is x minus half, x minus one is u minus one half over u squared minus five over four du. Now we'll furthermore split this into two more integrals. So here we'll have one half plus the integral from minus half to half of u over u squared minus five over four. So that'll be our first bit, du. And then minus, I'll bring the half out, and then we have the integral from minus half to half of one over u squared minus five over four du. Now we can make some pretty quick simplifications. Let's notice that the integrand in this first integral is an odd function. It's an odd function and we're integrating from minus half to half. So immediately we know that the value of this is zero. Furthermore, the integrand over here is an even function. And since we're integrating from minus half to half, we can change this 
to an integral from zero to half if we change this minus half just to a minus one. So we just multiplied the integral by two. So that leaves us with one half minus this somewhat simpler integral. Okay, let's bring that up and we'll finish it off. Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying the video. I'd like to take a moment to ask you to subscribe. Subscribing is really the best way to support me in my mission to continue providing excellent math videos for everyone. Thanks, and now back to the video. So this is where we left ourselves. We had our goal integral is a half plus the integral from zero to a half of one over five fourths minus u squared. I actually took the minus sign that was out front and used it to change the order of subtraction in the denominator here. Okay, so this kind of motivates to do, us to do one of two things. We could either do a trig substitution or we could do a partial fraction decomposition. I don't know, just kind of like flipping a coin and choosing, I'll do a trigonometric substitution. So here, let's set u in this case equal to the square root of five over two times the sine of theta. Notice that means that five fourths minus u squared is in fact equal to five fourths times cosine squared theta. That's using trig identities. And then du will be equal to the square root of five over two times cosine of theta d theta. So that'll allow us to rewrite the entire integrand here. Next up, when u is equal to zero, that tells us that theta is equal to zero. And then when u is equal to one half, then we'll take theta to be equal to alpha, where alpha is defined so that the sine of alpha is equal to one over the square root of five. So we're taking maybe alpha to be the inverse sine of one over the square root of five, if you will. And that just makes it so that if we plug this into here, we get a half for this upper bound. So you can check that pretty easily. Okay, so let's see. That's gonna leave us here with one half, and then we'll have plus the integral from zero up to alpha of, well, let's see what happens with our constants. We'll have this 5 fourths in the denominator because this cosine squared is in the denominator. Then we'll have the square root of five over two in the numerator. So in the end, that will give us a two over the square root of five. So just to reiterate, that's from this number divided by this number. Okay, then we will have a cosine theta from the du divided by a cosine squared theta from this denominator, leaving us with one over cosine, which is secant. So we have secant theta d theta. Okay, so this is looking good. Now the secant theta has a well-known antiderivative. It's kind of complicated, but it is well-known. And so this will be equal to the natural log of secant theta plus tangent theta. Then we need to evaluate that from zero to this number alpha. So let's see, evaluating that at zero, we get the natural log of secant of zero, which is one, plus tangent of zero, which is zero. So that's the natural log of one, which is zero. So in the end, all we need to do is find out what secant of alpha is and tangent of alpha is. But if we complete a triangle based off of this fact right here, we can do that quite easily. So let's complete a triangle down here real quick. So let's say we've got, like I said, a right triangle. We have angle alpha. So if the sine of alpha is one over the square root of two, then that means we have a length of one here, and then a length of the square root of five, I should say here. Then completing that triangle, we get a two here, just using the Pythagorean theorem, given that this is a right triangle. So from that, we can easily calculate the secant. So the secant will be hypotenuse over um, adjacent. So that'll be the square root of five over two. And then the tangent will be opposite over adjacent. So that'll be one over two. And then I just realized I lost this two over root five here. So let's bring that down. And then in the end, we'll have one half plus two over root five times the natural log of the sum of those two numbers. But you can see that the sum of those two numbers are exactly the golden ratio. That gives us a nice final answer here. And that's a good place to stop. Thank you.